All right, today we are going to jolt up factoring to another level by factoring with the AC method. And so I made this step-by-step -step, um, algorithm for you to follow. And you'll find it in um, week five module in Canvas. So you can print out as many as you want or use it online if you have like a tablet and a stylus and whatnot. But here is the idea. You've got this. This is the formula, remember, for a quadratic trinomial where A is the number in front of X squared, and B is the number in front of X, and C is the constant at the end. We use the AC method to factor when the A number, A is not equal to one. If it's any, any number other than positive one, and we need to factor, we're going to use the AC method when this is factorable over the integers, or the rationals, I should say, the rational numbers, numbers that can be made into fractions. You'll see later in the semester um, that, that we can factor all polynomials, but we bring in another number system, which we'll study next week. So, the first thing you do when you're going to factor by the AC method, or by any method for that matter, is you always check your polynomial for GCF. OK, now let's take this. To the second page, all of these have a blank second page. That you can use for writing because you always need to do that. OK, so I'm going to drag this over to the other page. And we're going to work on factoring this by GCF, which is something you're always going to try to do. A lot of the time, a lot of the time there is no GCF. That is, the GCF is one, which is the same way of saying you don't have one. But here we definitely do. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down each of these terms. This can be written as 60x to the fifth plus negative 104x to the fourth plus 32 x to the third. And the x's are really easy to write out. Here we've got x times x times x times x. Let's put the fifth x over here. And here we've got x times x times x times x. And here we have <clears throat> x times x times x. But how on earth do you break down the numbers? Here's how. And this is a technique you learned way back in beginning algebra. And I think it's the best technique in the world. All right, 60. I can think of a couple of numbers, you know, like one times 60, of course, but how about two times 30 or three times 10? Three times 10, three times 20. Um, 
So I could actually choose any of those. And the one that I'm most familiar with for 60 is six times 10. And then what I do is I just break down these two numbers. Six breaks down into two times three and 10 breaks down into two times five. So that's two times three times two times five, and I'm going to write these in order just because it makes life easier for me. Two times two times three times five. I'm going to do the same thing for 104. I don't really care about its sign right now. So 104. For sure, two will go into there. So two times 52. And then 52, I can get a calculator out, but 52 is two times 26. Make sure, yes. And I know for sure 26 is two times 13. And I know that 13 is a prime and it won't break down. So 104 equals two times two times two times 13. Two times two times two is eight. So let me make absolutely sure this is true. Um, that's 24, that's 104. Yes, it is, it's true. 104 equals two times two times two times 13 and 32. 32, well, I know it's four times eight. It's also two times 16. So whatever you're familiar with, or you can figure it out on your calculator, that's two times two. And eight is two times four. And four breaks down again into two times two. So what 32 equals is two times two times two times two times two, which is one heck of a lot of twos. Now this is what I wanna do. I wanna come up here and I am going to rewrite these terms by completely breaking them down. So this will be two times two times three times five, and this can definitely help you learn the times tables if you've never done it, okay? So 104 is two times two times two times 13, and I have to remember the sign. Well, actually, I don't really need that plus. I do need the plus, yeah. So negative two times two times two times 13. Times X times X times X times X. And then 32 is good grief. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times x times x times x. Now this is probably a little ridiculous, but then I know that I couldn't just look at these and see what the GCF is. I could with the variables, but I couldn't with the numbers. So this is going to help. Now I can look at each term and see what they each have in common. First, each term is going to have x to the third. So three x's, x times x times x, x times x times x, and x times x times x. But now we've got numbers. This has two twos. This has three twos, so it definitely has two twos. And this has good grief, five twos, so it definitely has two twos. So I can see what my GCF is. My GCF is two times two times X times x times x, which is 4x to the third. 
Okay. Now I write the leftovers, right? So over here, let's mark out what we've taken out. Three times five is 15 times X times X. That's going to be 15 X squared. Minus my plus an a negative two, that'll be minus two, times 13, that'll be minus 26, and there's one x left over. So a negative two times the 13 x is negative 26 x. <coughs> and then over here I have three twos, two times two is four, four times two is eight, so that's going to give me an eight. And I really should have done this in black. Now this lets me answer. Usually you don't have to go to this much work. But this gives me my answer to part one. Question one. Way back up here. Factor out a greatest common factor. OK. Well. So that gives me four x to the third times 15 x squared minus 26 x plus 8. So there I've taken care of the first step, but I'm going to go back down and make absolutely sure I wrote this correctly. And you can, of course, double check yourself. By distributing and getting back what you started with. OK, now. This is a quadratic trinomial. It's quadratic because anything with highest power two is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, it's called quadratic. So highest power two, and there are three terms, which makes it a trinomial. And those are the main things, the main little beasties that we're going to be factoring in the beginning, like now. OK, so since this is my quadratic trinomial, I know that this is A, goes in front of the X squared. This is B, goes in front of the X. And this is C, the constant at the end. So I'm going to do step two now. A is 15 just the number part. B is negative 26. Remember you've got an invisible plus sign there separating the terms. So the negative goes with the 26. And then eight is C. So that is the A and the B and the C that I'm gonna be working with. Everybody following me so far? OK. So I've done step one and I've done step two. Now I'm going to do step three. I'm going to multiply the A number and the C number. 15 times 8. All right, 15 times 8. We can pull out our wonderful little calculators wherever they may be. I have to remember to not turn it off. 
because then I have to go through this song and dance. All right, 15 times eight. I could have done it by hand in the amount of time it took to do this. Complain, complain. 120. All right, so A times C equals 120. Yes, it does. I don't really trust calculators either. <clears throat> okay, now we're up to step three. Step one was to factor out your GCF. Step two was to find A, B, and C for the quadratic trinomial. Step three is you multiply A times C, which is why this is called the AC method. Now, step four. We're going to factor the product of A times C, which is 120, into its factor pairs. Now this is positive 120. Let me put a plus in front of there just to make sure I know it's positive. Here we go. 120 equals 1 times 120 and 2 times 60 and 3 times 40 and 4 times 30 and 5. Hmm. <laughs> do, do. 24. 5 times 24. And 6 times 20. 7, no. But 8. Will 8 go into it? Bet it will. 8 into 120. You can do this with a calculator. I'm just not in the mood. 8 times 15. Nine, no, but 10, yes. Thank goodness, I've run out of room. Um, after this, they start repeating 12 times 10, 15 times eight, 20 times six. So um, these, each of these are factor pairs. Any two numbers you multiply together to get another number is a factor. So we can multiply one times 120 and get 120. Therefore, these two numbers are factors of 120. And these two numbers are factors of 120 and so on and so forth. Now I have to add these together. That is, I have to add five and 24 together. I have to add 6 and 20 together, um, and I have to find out which one will add up to a negative number. Oh, but remember that a negative number also equal, I mean a positive number, a positive number also equals a negative number times a negative number. So I'm going to rewrite these factor pairs. Negative one times negative 120. And negative two times negative 60. And negative three times negative 40. And negative four times negative 30. 
and negative 5 times uh, negative 5 times negative 24 and negative 6 times negative 20 and negative 8 times negative 15 and negative 10 times negative 12. And now we go through these and add them up and find out which of the two number pairs add up to negative 26. And I think I just found it. Look at this. Negative 10 times negative 12 is positive 120. Negative 10 plus negative 12. No, it's not. Doggone it. That's 22. Okay, negative 22. All right. Doggone it. All right. Now, negative 26. Right here. Duh. Okay, right here. This I'm sure of. See, it actually helps to add. Negative six plus negative 20 is, hold it, you'll never guess it, negative 26. Okay, I'm embarrassed. I'm used to it. So, we have found our two numbers that add up to negative 26. All of these are very necessary steps or I wouldn't have you go and throw them. All right, now, the product of the two numbers, negative six times negative 20 is positive 120. The sum of the two numbers is negative six plus negative 20 and that equals negative 26, which is our B number. Now let's stop for a minute and go back over what we've done. This is the basic AC method right here. First, you pull out any GCFs you might have. Then if you have a quadratic trinomial, you write down the A, you write down the B, and you write down the C. And then you multiply the A number times the C number and see what you get. That's the product. Then you factor that number into all of its factor pairs. Then you find which has a factor pair, well, you find out which factor pair, two numbers, will add up to the B number, whatever it is. Here it's negative 26. We found them, yay, yay. Not what I wanted them to be, but we found them. And now we know that B, all right, <clears throat> the numbers are negative six and negative 20 because they add up to negative 26, which is the B number. And it probably would have been better for me to write equals B. This is the AC method for revealing which two numbers we need in order to carry on. Because this is what's going to happen now. The polynomial we're factoring is 15x squared minus 26x plus 8.
because the A number here is not one, we're going to have to factor this by grouping. But you learned yesterday that you can only do factoring by grouping if a polynomial has four terms. This only has three terms. That's why I need negative six and negative 20. We're gonna need everything we did yesterday. I'm going to rewrite this as 15x squared. And now this middle number breaks apart into these two numbers, minus six X minus 20 X. And that is negative 26 X or minus 26 X. Notice that <clears throat> the 15x squared stays the same, and the number at the end, eight, the constant, stays the same. It's only the middle number, the, the middle term, that breaks apart into two separate terms. But they can't be any, any numbers. I mean, those numbers have to add up to that number. Otherwise, we've changed it we'll get the wrong answer. From here on out, we are just going to do the grouping that you did yes yesterday. So that's why I have this page. So let me go ahead and kind of separate off this work that we did. And we're going to need as much room as we can get. So, move that over a little bit. It's just to give us some more room. Normally we won't be writing all this stuff because the other problems are kind of easier. Okay, not easier, but less involved. These are big numbers, so when you've got big numbers, it takes longer to work, work out what their factors are. Okay. So, I'm actually going to cheat a little bit. Don't tell anyone. Ah, technology. The polynomial that ate Northwest Arkansas. There now. There's our polynomial. All right. Remember from yesterday, this is what you do. I write the first two terms in parentheses. I write a plus sign. And I write the second two terms in parentheses. Not 26x, that should be 20. Twenty. 
20. They add up to negative 26. Okay, where am I? Um, negative 6x. That's where the two came from, okay. Negative 20x plus eight. There, that's the first thing you do. You've got to have a plus sign in the middle. Now I'm going to factor the first two terms by GCF. So let's see, 15 is three times five times x times x minus two times three times x. Over here, we have to remember that nasty little rule. I think it's nasty, it's probably not. Um, when the leading term has a leading coefficient that is negative, then your GCF, your greatest common factor, has to be negative. Yes, there's a lot to remember, but that's what all this practice is for. All right, so I've got to find out um, four. Four goes into 20 and four goes into eight. And again, you can always use your calculator to help you find factors. So this is going to be, we've got to pull out a negative number. And since four goes into 20 and eight, that number is going to be negative four times five X. Plus, this is positive eight. I'm going to have to write what, neg what positive eight equals this way. Negative four times negative two. That's positive eight. In fact, let me write it bigger. Positive eight is going to equal negative four times negative two. And so here's what I have over here. And I really should put these in parentheses too, just to be consistent. All right, now I come back here, start on the left again, and I'm going to circle the numbers that are in both terms at the same time. Both of these terms has a three, and both of these terms has an X. So 3x is my GCF. And then I'm going to mark out the 3 and the x and the 3 and the x just so it doesn't mess me up or mess me up as much. So I'll have 5 and x left over in the first term and then a minus 2 in the second term. Now over here, both of these terms have a negative four. Kinda had to figure that out in the previous step. So I will write the negative four and then parentheses in the first term, I have a 5x. And in the second term, I have a negative 2 plus a negative 2 is minus 2. So here's what I've got so far. Now, just like yesterday, when you discover much to your happiness, that 
5x minus 2 and 5x minus 2 match. They're exactly alike. They now are the GCF of this expression. So I'm going to write it right here. 5x minus 2 and then open parentheses. The leftovers are, I didn't need that much room, minus four. See, I never judge correctly about, almost never, judge correctly about how much room I'm gonna need for that second set of parentheses. Now, before you go running off and thinking that that is your answer, it's not. And this is hard, I admit. We factored this little honey right here. You've still got its original GCF out here. So, when it comes to putting the answer in the answer box, you're gonna have 4x to the third parentheses, 5x minus two, times 3x minus 4 and that's your answer but of course we really need to check it all right be a big girl, Barbara. So that's 4x to the third, right? Okay, okay, okay. Check. Nobody likes to check. It's just sometimes you have to. All right, I, I, yeah, never mind. Now, just like yesterday, I'm going to take my 5x and multiply it by the second set of parentheses, and then minus 2 times 3x minus 4. And then 5x times 3x is 15x squared. 5x times minus 4 is minus 20x. Negative 2, or yeah, negative 2 times 3x is negative or minus 6x. And negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. Now don't distribute with the 4x to the third yet, but instead combine your two like terms. Okay, and so now we're going to distribute. We're going to have 
x to the third times 15 x squared minus 26 x times 4 x to the third Susie with the Vehicle Service Department, yeah. There's just no ending with the scams. Be careful. Okay, plus eight times four X to the third. Okay, we're getting done now. Four times 15 is 60. And I'm going to go a little more slowly on this. X to the 3 times X to the 2 is X to the 3 plus 2. And then we'll just come back and add those. Minus 26 X to the 1. Ah, 26 times 4. What is 26 times 4? That's... 24, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10, yes. 26 times 4 is negative 104. x to the 1 times x to the 3 is x to the 1 plus 3. And um, 8 times 4 times x to the 3rd is 32 x to the third, and now I'm just going to take this extra step to write the final answers. Okay, now I believe that's what we started with. right up here. 60x to the fifth minus 104x to the fourth plus 32x to the third. Yes, it is. So that means that this is the correct answer to put in the answer box. You have factored this completely. You don't have a common factor hiding in here or hiding in here. Everything, everything is broken down completely. And the trick is carefully and slowly using these steps. Let's do another one. This is, this has much better numbers. Okay, step one, factor out the greatest common factor, if there is one. And 10 and 13 and four, no, no. Both of these terms have an X, but the last one doesn't. Uh, the first and the last term have a two in them, but 13 doesn't, so no. The only GCF would be one, which means that's kind of a code for, no, there isn't a GCF for all three terms. Okay, so we now are gonna stick with this. I'm just, have, it'd be easier to write it down here. All right, A is 10, B is 13, and C is four. A times C will be 10 times four, which is 40. Positive 40. Okay, and we're gonna have a positive B. Well, that's nice too. Let's go ahead and write down the factors of 40. 40 equals 1 times 40 
two times 23, no, four times 10, five times eight, six, no, seven, no, and then starts repeating eight times five and so on and so forth. Now, because this is a positive number, you do have negative one times negative 40, negative two times negative 20, but we're trying to add up, find two numbers that add up to a positive 13. Therefore, these are the only numbers we're gonna be looking at anyway. And five plus eight is 13. So now we have our numbers. See, most of the time this does not take forever. The product of the two numbers, five times eight equals 40, check. The sum of the two numbers, five plus eight equals 13, check. All right, yes, five and eight are definitely the numbers we want. Now, 10x squared plus 13x plus four. Is going to break down into plus 5x plus 8x and then the plus 4 at the end stays the same. So here you go. See how fast that was. Big numbers are your enemy. We have 10x squared plus 13x plus 4. There was no GCF. We look right at this. This is A. This is B. This is C. So A, B, and C, real fast to fill out. Then we multiply the A number times the C number, and we get 40. Then we factor 40, and all we needed was the positive factors because we, we want to add up two numbers that equal a positive number, positive 13. And then we did a little double check here. Five times eight is 40. Well, yes. And five plus eight is 13. Yes, yes, yes. 13, right there. So, this is the four-term polynomial that I'm go going to be factoring by grouping. And even this is going to be easier than the last one because notice you've already got a plus in the middle. That's great. So we're just very quickly going to do this and we'll be finished by the time you know what hits you. Come on, be good. Okay, so actually, here's all I have to do. Parentheses around the first two and parentheses around the second two. I can look at these and see what the GCF is. I won't. I'll work it out, but I bet most of you can just see it also, see them. This is going to be two times, well, I wanted black. Why is this doing this to me? Persecuting me. Oh, 
okay? And two times four times X plus four. Now, we're faced with an issue here, but I'll show you. All right, each of these has a five and an X and a five and an X, each of these terms. So that is going to be my GCF for the first set of parentheses. And so I mark them out. I will have a two and an X left over from the first term and nothing from the second term. Don't put a zero because 5x and 5x times 1 are the same exact thing. There was an invisible one there all along. So just write it down. There you go. Now copy down the plus sign. Each of these terms contains a four. Oh, and we're gonna have that, that thing happen again. Let's say four times one. Okay, I'm gonna pull the four out to the front. Consistency. Pull the four out to the front. Mark through the fours. And then write the leftovers from each term. Now with great delight, I can see that the 2x plus one and the 2x plus one match. They are now the greatest common factor of this entire expression. So I write it down. And then I write the leftovers. And we said yesterday that if you write it like this, or if my math lab writes it like this, is that a big deal? No, it's exactly the same thing. When you multiply, order doesn't matter. That was incredibly easy. Okay, now let's check. You know, I don't really like my math lab because I had an answer right, but because I didn't have the order the way they wanted it, the answer was wrong according to them. Well, send me an ask my instructor from that problem. Okay, and I'll report it. All you have to do is go back into the homework or whatever. Okay. Thank you for telling me. I get annoyed when they do things like that. They're better than they used to be about it. Okay. Um, check. Notice I'm just leaving it the other way. Because honestly, it really doesn't matter. Now here's the slightly shorter way to do this. Take 5x, multiply it by 2x, and 5x and multiply it by one. Take plus four and multiply it by 2x. Take plus four and multiply by one. That way you don't have to take up quite so much room so 5x times 2x is 10x squared. 5x times plus 1 is plus 5x. And plus 4 times 2x is plus 8x. And plus 4 times plus 1 is plus 4. 
and that is 10 X squared plus 13 X plus four. Check. Make absolutely sure, yes. So we were right on that. So is the answer um, the? Uh, yeah, it's either one of these. OK. Yeah, I should put it in the answer box, shouldn't I? That can go in the answer box or this can go in the answer box. Because order doesn't matter, really, really. OK, you can do this if you notice that they're messing with you. OK, that B term needs to be over here. Now I need to leave that to you because there's a problem here we have to talk about. Here it is. 6B to the 6 plus 35B to the 3rd minus 49. Now there is no GCF here, okay? I mean, for all three, there is no GCF. Um, however, this is, to even begin to work it, you're going to have to learn a slightly new operation. And here it is. Whenever you notice that the power on the leading term is two times the power on the middle term. There's a method to make this easier called U substitution. And here's how it works. You take the variable raised to the lower power there. And you let that equal the letter U. Why U? Because it's got a whole history. Going back to the early Middle Ages. If you square the U, you have to square B to the third. And here's another rule for exponents when you have a base raised to a power and raised to a power again, that's when you multiply the powers. You don't add them, you multiply them. This is going to be B to the three times two which is b to the 6. Now, here's what that means to me. It means that I get to rewrite this in the following way. 6u squared plus 35u minus 49. This is now temporarily quadratic. So we can go ahead and we can use the AC method on it. Let's go. U equals this. U squared is going to equal that. That's kind of the proof that it really does. But it can only happen if this power is two times this power. 
Okay, and that's called U substitution. So our A is going to be six, our B is 35, and our C is negative 49. And now we're going to multiply six times negative 49. And I will pull up my calculator. You better be on. Okay. Come on. There. All right, six times negative 49. Is negative 294. Oh. All right. Now we have to factor negative 294. I bet it's not going to be as bad as it looks. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down 294 without the sign. I am going to go back in and take care of it being negative. I'm not just going to forget it but I'm also going to show you a handy dandy trick with the calculator if you're interested. You don't have to use it, but it does help, and let me show you. I use this when I have larger problems. I have so many problems. Okay. If you go to Y equals, and you clear out anything that might be there by hitting the clear button. This is what we're going to do. 2, 9, 4 divided by X. I'm not going to graph it. I don't care what it looks like. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to push the second button and then the graph button in order to get the table. See the table written above graph. If I hit, if I hit second first, <laughs> that sounds weird, and then click graph, I get this. Now ignore anything that has a decimal. That's not what we're after. But here, according to this, I'm going to write down what I see are the factors of 294. Now, again, I'm ignoring the negative sign. I'm going to go back and take care of it. Trust me. All right. Don't trust me. Now. 1 times 294. You almost never use that, but sometimes you do. 2 times 147. 3 times 98. Now I have 4 times 73.5. I don't want that. And 5 times 58.8. I don't want that. Decimals. No decimals. Now I come to six times 49. Now I, I need to check my B number. My B number is 35, okay. Now I'm going to use the down arrow here. Seven times 42. And then probably there are not 14 times 21. Let's write them all down while we're at it. And then 21 times 14. So after this, it starts to turn around. Okay, that's what I needed. Now watch, watch the magic. 
I know that 294 is negative and not positive. It's just easier to write down the factors this way. Now I'm going to go ahead and make this negative because it really is. The way you get a negative number is you multiply a negative number times a positive number. So watch what I do. Going to make the first numbers negative. And then I'm going to go back and make the second numbers negative. There now. Those are the integer factors, the whole numbers that are positive and negative. The integer factors of negative 294. I need the pair that will add up to positive 35. And here it is. Negative 7 plus 42 equals positive 35. Let's make sure with the calculator. I'll go second quit to get out of this. The quit word is above mode. Okay, uh, negative seven plus 42, enter. Yep, 35, woohoo! So we now have our numbers negative 7 and positive 42. Negative 294. And negative 7 plus 42 equals 35. Now, what does that mean for me? It means this. That S, uh, 6U squared plus 35U minus 49 going to be broken down into 6u squared. Now I could put minus 7, but 6 goes into 42, so it'll be easier for me. Oh, and 7 goes into 49, so I'm just thinking ahead into what would be easier to find a GCF. So that's how I'm going to write it. I'm going to take the plus 42 and put it here just to make life a little bit easier. And the minus 7u and put it here. And that's, that's minus 49. All right, so here is my four-term polynomial that I am going to sneakily, I don't know if that's a word actually, 6u squared plus 42u minus 7u minus 49. Got to recopy that on the second page if you use this. Um, okay, now. 
boom, 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 with a plus in the middle. You've got to have a plus. There you go. Now, this is six times u times u plus six times seven times u plus negative seven times u plus negative seven times seven. Negative seven times positive seven is negative 49. Because the leading, leading coefficient is negative, I have to have a, a negative GCF. All right, so six and U, each of these terms over here on the left have six U in them. Six U and six U. So I'll write that down, six U and then mark it out. I have leftovers of u plus seven plus each of these terms has a negative seven mark it out i'll be left with a u plus a positive seven. Oops. A U plus a positive seven. So now U plus seven and U plus seven, they match. That becomes the GCF and the leftovers are six U minus seven. Now, um, because we have two minutes to go, we can't leave the answer like that. Because the original problem didn't have any use in it. Instead, we have to go back to what U equals. U equals B to the third. Notice I don't have a U square. So I don't have to worry about that. All I need to do is re-substitute for u. Since u equals b to the third, we'll have b to the third plus seven times six b to the third minus seven. After which we can check. Or you can go ahead and multiply this together. And then when you get your answer, put in the answer, put in what u squared equals and put in what u equals then. You can do it either way. Now I'm gonna go ahead and check this, but you've seen how to do it. So, you go home and have fun with the AC method. And I'm going to finish up this problem. I need to do the check. Stay honest. So I'll say bye bye to anybody who wants to leave and I'll continue to check my problem. Okay. I, well, let, let's write this. B to the third plus seven times six B to the third minus seven. So B to the third times six B to the third minus seven plus seven times six B to the third minus seven. So this will be six times B to the third times B to the third. Uh, 
minus 7b to the third, plus 42b to the third, minus 49. b to the third times b to the third is b to the three plus three. I'm gonna leave it that way for a minute, then I'll just come back and write a six. Um, this is going to be plus 35 b to the third minus 49. So I'll have six b to the sixth plus 35 b to the third minus 49. Let me check that. That was a six, all right. Six B to the six plus 35 B to the third minus 49. Yes, that was correct. Okay, whew, this was correct. Okay, wanna discuss this? Down a little Sorry. Pardon? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay, I'll see you tomorrow when we're going to do something easier. You'll be glad to know. I hope you have a good day. I will, you too. Ooh, it's it's the rain's going away and it's brightening up. That's a good thing. <laughs>